I've noticed a, a growing trend in social media of it's normally very attractive, very successful, famous women posting what I call bullshit quotes to social media. <laughs> um, Cheryl Cole does this a lot. She posts uh, quite a few, and they're always in like a nice font on a seascape background. A good example, she posted one which was, your attitude is your altitude. It determines how high you fly. And that was by Anonymous. <laughs> There's a reason no one's claimed authorship of that. <laughs> But, um, Cara Delevingne is the worst for this. She's a model. If you don't know who she is, just imagine an eyebrow. That's all you need. Um, <laughs> just floating around celebrity parties. And she posts minimum one a day, and they make me so livid that I've had to start commenting on them. So she posted one which was, listen and silent are spelt with the same letters. Think about it. I thought about it for ten seconds and commented, also tinsel. Think about that. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I've gone one further. I've set up my own hashtag. It's very modern. It's hashtag bullshit quotes I just made up. Um, <laughs> I have two rules. I can't have thought about the quote for longer than ten seconds, and then I post it, whatever it is, tagging Cara Delevingne, Cheryl Cole, Laura Whitmore, the TV presenter, and sometimes Jamila Jamil, and it'll be things like... Don't cry when it rains. The weather is weeping for us all. <laughs> I think I just made it up in ten seconds means nothing. Well, my favourite one I've posted, which is, um, life is like a box of chocolates. It doesn't last long if you're fat. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Jimmy, I want to now talk about my lovely mother, who I adore, but she's also now joined Twitter to start stalking on me. And, um, I use Twitter to sort of do silly jokes. Here's one as an example. I, t uh, I tweeted, do you know it takes 26 muscles to smile and only one muscular guy in the gym to give me a bone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, just a little silly joke. She replied with, do you know I didn't know that, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I've managed to get her back though. I've tweeted a joke that she wasn't happy with. Why do women sound like they're having an orgasm when they play tennis? And why does my mother play tennis in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> she was livid. She wrote, I see this as 120 retweets. Thanks, son. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, mother. <laughs> <laughs> vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel. I, C, W, vowel. vowel. Sorry, Rachel, I know you're pregnant, but a. please hurry up. <laughs> please. Consonant. Consonant! S. D. Consonant vowel. G and E. Could my mascot come and stand next to me, please? So, I, I need to be relaxed when I play this game. <laughs> and so, when the producers messaged me and said, what do you want for a mascot, I said, I need a masseuse. And they said, fine, what sort of masseuse? So I, w I sent them an email. I'll read you the email. I said, I want a masseuse with firm palms and soft eyes, with a melancholy, a sense of wonder, a thirst for the unknown. <laughs> they must love their mother with all their heart. <laughs> they must have once killed a gecko with a ballpoint pen. <laughs> They've tasted the crisp sea air on the French Riviera. They're an ex-lover of Charlotte Church. <laughs> They've known and recovered from the depths of heartache. They've crushed the head of a robin with their fist. <laughs> they must have warm hands, be full of love. They must make me their ragdoll and punish me from above. <laughs> they said they couldn't do that, so this is Deborah. <laughs> can you can get going, Deborah, if you'd like? She doesn't use oil, she just spits where it hurts and gets to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've started doing vegan in the week. Right. I want to be a better... Thank you for the round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> and the, it's, I have a lot of legumes. I love a legume, you know, like a, a, a nut or a pulse. I love those. And I'm having loads of them and it makes me very gassy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I don't know if you've tried the vegan lifestyle, but the poos, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, the only way I can describe it is like shoes falling out of a loft. <laughs> Uh, do you watch the normal countdown? Yes, Des. Um, <laughs> I've only got to about midway through series three, so don't <laughs> tell me what happens. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to 
spoil the... Carol's looking amazing. I, guess, <laughs> I mean, they said she had a lot of work done, but that's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> this is your first time on Cat Stars Countdown as a player. Yes. How do you think you're going to do? Badly. Because yeah. I'm not very good at spelling. I'm not very good at maths. <laughs> the reason I wanted to avoid Dictionary Corner is the last couple of times I've been in Dictionary Corner, clips of my performances have ended up on lad-based Facebook pages. <laughs> so, um, lad bible, mm. uni lad, chav lad. <laughs> and whilst I am an absolute lad, as you know... <laughs> um, <laughs> I consider myself to be quite laddy, but the people commenting on Chav Lad don't think I'm that laddy. Right. It's so basically somebody that talks like me on Chav Lad gets the sort of response that you would get if you go to sort of a dinner party and say, What do you think of Brexit? and then <laughs> open a box of wasps. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to go under the radar. Have you got a mascot this evening, Joe? Yes, I have. So one thing, um, Every time I've been on this show, I always feel like that clock goes quickly and I don't trust it. <laughs> but who I do trust is Pam St Clement. <laughs> <laughs> and I've, this is a clock that I have in my bedroom and I trust it with my life. So I'll be using Pam as the timer. <laughs> it's, rather than GMT, it's PST, Pam St Clement time. <laughs> <laughs> I do is see how offensive I could get with an engraver <laughs> and so I got in contact with a friend of mine who works in Birmingham's jewellery quarter for some contacts of some engravers and this is one uh, text exchange I had I wrote hello I'm looking to get a message engraved on a bracelet can you help the reply was sure what is the text for the bracelet I just went straight in and I replied fuck the police <laughs> <laughs> He agreed to it. He said, ha, that's different. Should be fine. So I thought, ha, let's see how far we could go. I said, it will need to be quite small, as it will be for a child. <laughs> <laughs> no reply. Uh, another one I did. Hello, Paul, we'll call him. I want a bracelet engraved with a heartfelt message. Have you any availability? Thanks, Joe. He replied, I could do in the next couple of weeks. What sort of bracelet slash message? I replied, I need a rose gold bracelet engraved with you're not my real dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like it in a Baroque font. <laughs> he said, sorry, no can do. I said, do you not do Baroque fonts, Paul? <laughs> he said, no, I won't engrave that message. So I just thought, oh, let's see where I can go with Paul. So I said, how about I love you, Sandra? He said, yes, obviously I can do that. So I put, can you do it in the shape of a swastika? <laughs> <laughs> he replied, OK, very good, bye-bye. <laughs> I've never been to Glastonbury before. I have a rule, if you're doing a poo on somebody else's poo, you've made a wrong decision. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly if you're listening to Lionel Richie at the same time. <laughs> I have been trying to sell fake stories to newspapers. And this is one I tried to sell to the Sun newspaper. I'll just read it to you. I wrote, I was recently walking through London Soho when I spotted Matt Baker from the BBC One show on his phone in the street. He seemed angry about something, and at one point he was so angry that, to my amazement, he tried to kick a pigeon. <laughs> he had about three attempts, and on one of them he did clip its wing. He was shouting what sounded like, die, pigeon, prick. <laughs> this didn't happen in any way. I've never met Matt Baker. <laughs> I managed to get some pictures. I was wondering how much you might be interested in buying them for. I got a reply from the Sun newspaper within two minutes. <laughs> they said, Joe, kicking a pigeon, question mark, that is pretty shitty for a one-show bloke. <laughs> it's quite colloquial for a first email back, I feel. <laughs> Can you send me the pictures? Cheers. I can't give his real name for legal reasons, so I'll call him Rodney. <laughs> I said, Rodney, my lawyer says I shouldn't send you the full pictures until I have an offer from you as to how much you'll pay for them. I've attached a cropped version of one of the shots for the time being. <laughs> Response? He replied, that's a photo of a pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Very astute. <laughs> Here's my photo of a pigeon. He attached that one on the top there. <laughs> he also attached a picture of Matt Baker and said, can you send me a picture of this man kicking a pigeon? <laughs> so I sent him a curveball and I just said, is that a picture of Matt Baker? I thought he was Chinese. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
replied, you thought he was Chinese, question mark. You mean you have a picture of a Chinese man kicking a pigeon? I said, yes, how much will you pay for it? He said, I fear we might be wasting each other's time. Good day. I said, you'll be sorry when you see tomorrow's Guardian front page. Good day. I found the email address of the CEO of Network Rail. He owns all of the train stations in the United Kingdom. So I genuinely wrote this. Dear Sir, <laughs> I am contacting you regarding an urgent emergency at London Euston. Last night I enjoyed a prawn masala and garlic naan from a curry house in Peckham. I had concerns about the hygiene standards of the establishment, but was blinded by my hunger and chose to ignore the warning signs. <laughs> Thus, today, I have been, as my father would say, pissing through my ass. <laughs> the reason this is relevant to you is that I currently find myself at London Euston train station without 30 pence. <laughs> Some of you might be ahead of me on this. As your toilet facilities demand this fee and I'm about to explode, I am left in a most perilous position. I have managed to find some privacy and I'm currently perched behind a bin <laughs> on one of the platforms near Delicia de France, <laughs> desperately trying to hold in what I anticipate to be a towering cascading waterfall of post masala sadness. <laughs> was wondering if you might be able to lend me some of your £675,000 salary. Then I put in brackets, that would buy you 2.25 million train station <laughs> toilet trips, you lucky bugger. <laughs> to avoid this impending atrocity. Either that or perhaps stop charging for what most people would consider to be a basic human right. Regards, Joe Lysa, I also put, P.S. Should you lend me the money, I would be delighted to invite you for tea at my home to say thank you. But please give me plenty of notice, as I'll need to install a turnstile outside the bathroom. <laughs> But PPS, you're literally taking the piss. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I realise on this show I'm not very good at playing the game, and I felt like the issue was that I'm not... I don't believe in myself enough. Oh. And so my mascot is myself. And I asked the team here to make a, a T-shirt and a hat uh, with my face on it, and they've done it. That's the picture they've gone with. <laughs> Which I'm going to be honest with. <laughs> I'm not thrilled about. <laughs> it's the sort of angle that you'd get and the expression if you were wanking me off. <laughs> That's what you'd see. And I've got it on a half as well. So you're sort of your own biggest fan for the evening? For, for, for this evening, I feel like I'm going to be really positive and I'm hoping those positive vibes either win me the competition or I get wanked off. <laughs> well, you're on the right team, Joe. <laughs> Is that genuinely true? Your kitchen extension was opened by the Lord Mayor of Birmingham? Yeah. I, I wanted a plaque on the wall of my kitchen and I thought about getting Paul Chuckle to open it because I know him quite well. <laughs> and then I thought, yeah, I can go one better, so I emailed the Lord Mayor of Birmingham. And uh, she said no, because it's a private event, so I made it public and I sold tickets to the public. <laughs> It ended up on, like, Radio 1 ended up being the, like, the official broadcaster of it. They did, they did the local BBC weather from my kitchen. <laughs> There's a new downstairs loo as well, so I was thinking Ooh. maybe get Paul to do that. A little plaque in the toilet. He could do the first shit. <laughs> he could have a wank in there, I don't mind. <laughs> to me, to you, to oh. me, to you. God, that felt good. 